Again, the jury selection process taking place at this hour, and as soon as a jury has been seated, we'll head to Ohio for the opening statements in this case. Again, he is not representing himself. For a while there, he wanted to. He's gone through a lot of attorneys, kind of like Sarah Boone down in Florida. Let's talk about it. Michael Gottlieb is with us. He's a criminal defense attorney in Florida and Fort Lauderdale. Happy Monday to you. Michael, uh, this, this guy sounds like a handful uh, in terms of a client. He's ripped through six attorneys and, and, and dabbled with maybe representing himself. Uh, what's it like to deal with a, a person like this? Also been disruptive, apparently, in, in the courtroom. It's wire. Yeah, he's certainly not controllable, and that's a problem. Um, he's been found competent. So one of the things for competency is can you control yourself in the courtroom? He's over-talking the judge. He's trying to control the situation. Um, he's controlling the case by hiring and discharging or getting appointed and discharging lawyer after lawyer after lawyer. And he's setting himself up possibly for appeals because he's creating an attitude where maybe he doesn't have adequate representation. Maybe the attorney hasn't been on the case long enough. Maybe they're not communicating with uh, with him appropriately. The Sixth Amendment says he's entitled to adequate representation. So, you know, what he's doing could be controlled or it could be out of mental health, but he's definitely a handful. The evidence against him, um, it, we'll find out more, obviously, in the opening statements, but um, it seems like it's a story that a jury is going to be easily able to comprehend if you're listening to the state's opening, and that is um, two people together, and um, and love gets in the way, and something happens, and uh, one of them's dead, and then now he's sitting over at the defense table. When you factor in difficult client, difficult facts, how do you represent in, in a case like this uh, to the best of your abilities? So unfortunately, you, ha you know, a uh, female victim stabbed 55 times, um, a domestic relationship. I think they were married 27 years. Things weren't going well, contentious uh, situation. You know, it's, it's, um, it's very difficult to represent somebody like that, especially as a lawyer when you have a client who's not really cooperative and not only not cooperative, but not helpful. Um, that'll show to the jury as well. The jury will see that, you know, they, they come into the courtroom and they size up the client right away, how he's dressed, how he's acting, how he's corresponding with his lawyer. And they're going to see that and they're going to see that tension and it'll cause problems with him being able to get, whether it's a not guilty or even a lesser verdict. Yeah, the, the whole angry man vibe. And he may, he may change it once the jury's in the room, maybe, you know, during trial, maybe he um, can control that and doesn't project that. And, and But we'll, have, we'll wait and see. It's very difficult to, because uh, we've seen defendants do it over the years here at Court TV or try to do it, and by day two or three, uh, the real person pops out uh, just with their mannerisms. And to your point, the jury is watching all of it and feeling all of it. We'll see. Uh, again, the jury being selected at this hour, our team there says uh, they're making progress. As soon as they have a jury, the judge says they're going right into opening. So